Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk Wonder Woman. And right now, we're looking at behind the scenes settings. We're going to compare them with some of the settings in the movie. And this one, this is the actual place where they filmed the Thymoscira shots for various things, okay? And this is pretty cool. This is a place in Italy, I believe it is. You can see the Amazons right here. Let's have a good, nice shot at them there. And you know, they took a lot of time. They took months and months of horseback training to get up to par with that. And, you know, that must have been a rigorous routine. But they look really good on the horses. They look like they could ride horses and they've been riding all their lives. Of course, a lot of people, a lot of women also knew how to ride horses to start with. So it was even more exceptionally interesting. Here we have a nice shot of Thymoscira. By the way, when we saw that market scene in Thymoscira, that was almost, almost completely organic. There was enhancement to the scene, but most of it was actually real. That's why I don't understand why people could say that. You know, Wonder Woman was mostly CGI. I don't, I don't know what they're talking about. It's very much organic. There is a lot of CG and green screen at certain places, but uh, not entirely green screen. So it's really ridiculous when people say silly things like that. Here is, for instance, a scene here of Thymoscira, the marketplace. And for the most part, you can see that the, the place is mostly, it's mostly real. It fits in with the movie very much. And I'll show you the landmarks that proves this, right? So you can see the mountainside, you can see all the greenery on the, on the buildings here. Greenery on the mountainside, you can see the mountainside here. I want you to just have a good look at the mountainside here and how high up it is, okay? And we're gonna look at a shot from the actual movie right now. We're gonna compare it to this shot. This shot is a wide outside shot. It's coming down the center of the building. So this is a good shot to have a look at it. So let's have a look. And here's a shot of Thymoscira from uh, Thymoscira. Here it is. And I'll show you some, let's compare some of the landmarks here with uh, the movie. So you can see here, we have this jagged landmass, this, this wall, jagged wall here, and there's a building kind of partially covered by a rock mass here. We can't see the whole building top. We can see the, the, the columns here, and there's some green screen there to put in some, uh, you know, some 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 carvings some sculptings of the gods there we can see this kind of church-like uh, appearance thing here a lot of greenery here on the sides and a lot of greenery at the mountainside right so watch at this look at that same greenery out of the mountainside it's embellished a bit and colors enhanced here's the piece of building that the rock was blocking just so you can see it again this is the piece of building here it's slightly off to the side of this but that's the building there that's been sort of embellished. Um, we also see, uh, again, the face here with the arches and stuff. The green screen was somewhere here. We can see the marketplace, and it's very similar to the marketplace here. Look at all the, all the stuff in the marketplace and all these little things here. All right. And then we have this, this uh, architectural design here. Some of it is not seen in the actual movie. They probably cut off pieces of the building see the architectural design, see the cut off pieces of the building, but most, for the most part, this is the building here. There's an arch right here. I don't know if there's an arch there. Let's see. Yes, there's an archway here as well. All right. There's a building here with a step going down. You can see a step on the side. Let's see if you see that building in, in the design here. And there it is, the building here. And there's the step going down. All right. Slightly different angle. Okay. So you can see that most of this is real. This is probably a CGI waterfall uh, because of the time of year. Again, the sculpting here on the, the, the side and all, even all of this stuff here is actually part and parcel of almost the actual thing. You can see the road going this way, coming this way, all right? Just this rock mass here is kind of blocking the view. Let's have another picture. Look at uh, Thymoscira here. Here it is again. And uh, you get a better look at the place. So here we look for the architectural design that's this. This is the place with the steps going down. Okay, so we're going to have a better look at the architectural design. There's the stuff here, all right? There's the wall. We know there's a building here, all right? There's a building. Well, this is the place with the steps in the building, okay? This is kind of a close-in shot of this place, I guess. It's a close-in shot of the place. Let's see if you can go all the way up as well. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And it's a mountainside and everything there. And you can see people walking down some steps here, but you can see there's a big rock face here. So we'll look for that rock face, okay? And it has buildings in the rocks. It seems the buildings are built into the 
into the, the, the mountainside, okay? So, all right, let's have a look and see if we see those artifacts in the movie here. And there is the staircase place, like we said, and here is the building. It's the building on the side. Look at these two windows. This will be able to identify it, and let's just have a look at that very quickly. There's the two windows right here. This is the close building close to us. That's the building we were just seeing. Um, and let's see here. We said a rock face. There's a rock face. There's a rock face here with buildings and stuff in it. Let's see if we can see that. And you can see here, uh, car, uh, car, you know, a, a building kind of protruding out of the rock face here and some steps and stuff. Let's see if we see that there. And okay, we can't see above. We can't see the upper surface to be able to tell you about that. What I can tell you though, <clears throat> well, I can't really tell you because it's, it's, we can't see beyond. I wanted to see if there was any waterfalls or anything behind the buildings, but we can't see that. We're kind of close up to these buildings here. Let's have another look at this. Ah, uh, here we are. There's the rock face right here. And there's the building protruding forward here that we saw uh, in the actual picture. There it is. There it is, protruding forward right here. This is a kind of close-up, so you can't really see everything. But it, this is up here, and you got these places up here. Let's see if we can see some steps in the corner, or maybe we'll see green. Did they cut it? No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope, nope. There is the steps right there. You can see people walking down those steps right there. So it's all in there. So all of this is real. And probably embellished, you know, a little bit more greenery. The greenery was there. They embellished the greenery. You know, they put in a river probably in the back. I don't know because I can't tell you because it was too much of a close-up for me to be able to tell you. I'll try and find some other pictures to see if I can see that. And you can see that all these houses in the background, which I think were actually houses in the actual movie as well. Uh, but interestingly enough, if you look in the, in, in the background here, in the, in, in, as you continue onwards, the mountainside goes up, but it's very green here. So they embellished again the mountainside, I believe. And I think the architecture is more or less the same, the sculpting. So you got here, mountainside here, mountainside there. This one's kind of going up a little bit higher than usual, I would say. Uh, let's have a full look at it. There you go. So this is the mountainside here, the full mountainside. You got another full mountainside that way. You got all these architectural designs and you got mountains overlapping going backwards there. Let's see if we can see that in these pictures. And yes, there is the mountainside, the big mountainside there. Another mountainside here, and the mountains overlapping as they go off into the distance. Let's see if we can have another look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so they, they more or less followed the architectural design. They more or less followed the architectural design, except I saw a, a, a characteristic arch uh, somewhere here. There was an arch somewhere here, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see if we can see that. Yeah, there it is, the arch here. But uh, mostly everything else here is pretty much real and in, embellished. <laughs> embellished a bit and you also notice there's a statue here there's no statue they just create that so that's CGI that's been put in there now the embellishment and everything else and you can see that all of this is actually real these are actually real things embellished into uh, CGI so the amount of green screen in this <coughs> and 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 remodeling in this uh, in this shot in this particular view where Diana is walking through uh, the market of Thymuscira is actually minimal well not minimal. It's, it's a lot of work they've done, and they, they, you know, to actually grade, sculpt, and so on. And there's a lot of layering that's going on here, really. But at the end of the day, um, this is mostly organic. And again, it points to the point that people say that Wonder Woman, you know, it's a lot of CGI. The CGI here is a composite, and it's meshed with <laughs> reality. That's the one thing about the DCU I like. If, if you look at Thor Ragnarok, you can tell everything CGI. You, if you look at Avengers, everything looks CGI more or less. You know, you can see the CG elements in the, the real world elements. You can't tell that with these movies in the DCEU. They usually merged in pretty well, except I would say for Suicide Squad, where uh, with the Enchantress thing, it kind of felt CG. You could feel the CG all the way through. But Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, uh, Wonder Woman, for the most part, the films feel organic. I mean, the most CG-ish effect you might get the feel of is what the final battles, the final acts like with uh, Doomsday versus the Trinity, uh, the final sets of action started to become kind of CG heavy. Uh, when you look at Man of Steel, uh, you don't feel the CG really in Man of Steel. It's very organic almost all the way through. And uh, Wonder Woman, that final action with uh, Ares feels a bit CG. But other than that, you don't really feel it all the way through the movie. Most of the time, you can tell. But I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, the whole thing's CG. It's a CG fest. I mean, come on now. Justice League, again, feels very organic. 
Again, I believe because they composite. I heard a guy say that Aquaman, when he's knocking that parademon down to earth, it's, it's in front of a green screen, and I really don't know. I can't really tell you if it's in front of a green screen or not. I know you're seeing the sky, and he's coming down from the sky, and he's coming down below, and you see the buildings and stuff below. But I would say that it's very possible that there's a lot of compositing going on there again, and there's real elements mixed with uh, CG or green screen elements, just like this picture here. That's the thing that people don't understand. When it comes to DCEU, they try to stay as organic and grounded as possible. Marvel's not really interested in that. You can tell in a Captain America film, the, the airport scene, you can tell what's CG and what's not. You can just look at the sky, look at the when they're fighting and stuff, and you can tell what's CG and what's not. It's, it's it, By the way, CG has come a long way, so I wanted to just say that. But um, at the end of the day, it doesn't feel real. But... When you look at a DCEU movie, you actually feel it, you feel the camera shaking, you feel the world shaking, you feel the elements of film in there. Um, you can tell that this, this, this river here flowing right here is more, more than likely CG. This river here flowing here is more than likely CG. So that's it. That, that looks like a CG river. It's really, really blue. So I wouldn't be surprised this river here or this basin here is CG. You know? can't tell this is CG but it is CG and I know it flows naturally and everything and it looks good but um, it, it that's possibly CG maybe even these flowers and stuff here are CG and this you know certain CG en enhancements but the, 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 the base of this thing is obviously real you know and that's the thing this is called compositing and that's different to what they do in the Marvel Universe most of the time. Even though they do ha did have some set pieces on Guardian of the Galaxy, don't get it twisted, they had some set pieces. But you feel like it's, it's CG, it's a CG fest. Um, even Spider-Man Homecoming, which was set in real, real world events, you could tell that Spider-Man was CG quite a lot. Uh, you knew Tom Holland wasn't swinging on nothing, you know what I mean? And again, I'm just saying that you have to bear all these things in mind. That you can't be going pointing at people because you're a Marvel fan and you're saying this is CG. All this thing looks like a CG fest and it's CG. Come on, man, wake up, wake up. That 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 doesn't fly at all. This stuff looks real, man. So that's why I, I get annoyed when people who should really be keeping silent open their mouths and say things when their company or the company they're proposing for does it all the time so like please don't don't do that just don't do it here are some more of time mascara again real stuff this was all the food and stuff you were just now seeing in the marketplace showing that the civilization they uh they did a lot of farming look at this wonderful stuff here and the designs which most of you probably missed look at that okay i think i don't know if that's wool and here are the different kinds of grains different types of flowering plants, the pots, very, very Grecian, it's very nice, and it's a beautiful city by night, this is what it looks like, remember all those little houses you were seeing on the sides, in, in this, uh, in this picture here, all these little houses, Let's see if I can zoom in there. all these little houses, that's, that's what you're looking at here, in this shot, and you're seeing them in the night, so they actually are real places. And here are the Thymuscurians. Love to show you them because they're so cool. The Amazonians. So they're trained in war, but when they're not in war, they're just like normal women moving around in Grecian clothing. It's really cool. Here's again some more. This is a different angle of uh, the marketplace. Really, really wonderful to look at. Is the big stone wall here so in different angles you see different things here is the queen this is Queen Hippolyta and they're securing her into the horse here here she is riding the horse again it's fantastic look at that and that fantastic and this is the equestrian probably the equestrian uh, caretaker the horse and this is a shot you've probably never seen before. This is with Connie Nielsen walking uh, as she's passing through on set. It's pretty cold, as you can see someone's wearing a overcoat here. She's walking in between uh, takes somewhere. Really cool. 
Okay, here are the stunt doubles. There, this is Gal, and 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 this is Robin Wright's stunt double, and they're actually waging war. And these women don't play. They don't play. Here's Gal actually facing off against Robin Wright here. Yeah, the stunt double is going at it. You can see the green screen behind to fill up some of the elements of the atmosphere. And man, them woman, those women are just tearing into each other. It's really crazy. It's really believable. Of course, skilled in martial arts. And they're going at it like, yeah. This is when uh, Robin Wright's character kicks a gal. Now, don't get it twisted. The actors also do the sequence. But they like to have the stunt doubles also. So you remember, you, you can do multiple takes. So they can use where the stunt double may be and where the actual actor may be. And also, as with Connor Nielsen's uh, stunt double, she had uh, some almost mocap sort of stuff on her face, these dots on her face. So they could put, they could uh, texture in Connie Nielsen's face in place. So sometimes it's seamless because you're actually not watching the stunt double. You're watching the stunt double, but you don't know because the face of the person looks like uh, Gal or Connie Nielsen or Robin Wright. And these are the two stunt double women and they're going at it. And I showed you them uh, in some of the earlier photos of the Amazon, so you can always go and watch my video on Wonder Woman, the Amazons, and you can get all that. And they, they weren't playing, man. They were just going at it there. It's really sick. This is where they pause, and then they start fighting again. This is Gal and Connie here duking it out as well. Not Connie, sorry, Robin Wright. It's really cool. And this is what it takes to make a movie, okay? A lot of professional people with all kinds of expertise. It this is what it takes to make and that's not everybody there, obviously. It's just some of the people. So it's just really insane. <laughs> and maybe some of these people you know, maybe some of these people you don't know. Here they are. So, don't ever think that it's just about the director and the actors and so on. Here is Gal's stunt double here. You see her in the background. So there's a stunt double chilling out in the background. Isn't that cool? She was doing some of those awesome martial arts moves. And if you pay attention a little bit more, you you find more and more stuff. <laughs> All of these people, ladies and gentlemen, all of these people. So when, when you see somebody making a movie, it's tons upon tons upon tons of people that make a movie possible, okay? Tons of people. I want you to see all these people's faces because they really are the people with the passion, the drive that help make a movie possible. There's a ton of them. It's really cool to see them all. And here's Peter. This is uh, David Twillis here. He's a principal. Here is uh, Chris Pine. He's another principal gal here in, in costume. And of course, the director is Patty Jenkins. But then uh, you got all these other people here, man. All of them. So it's it's a lot. <laughs> to pull off a movie like this, it, 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 it takes a lot. A lot of people. A hell of a lot of people. Okay. All of them good at something. Makes this thing happen. And this is not all of them. It's probably a couple. It's like 400 and something people. Maybe even more. Because they're in different parts of the globe doing different things as well. But it's nice to see one big happy family. And they know what they're doing and stuff. And of course, we, we didn't even talk about the people on the set, the extras and all these other people. Here are the soldiers, here are the Amazons, and it's a ton of Amazons. You know, I never really get, got to show you guys the complete picture. You got some green screen in the background. They're on beach, they're on site. So the background kind of fills into the background that's already there. You see Robin Wright talking to someone else. I don't think this is Robin Wright's stunt double. I think this is Robin Wright. She's getting ready to ride on the horse here. And you got the horses ready. You got all these Amazons and you got the stunt. This is, I think, Sammy Joe. She's a stunt double. But you got all these other Amazons here. And then you got all these other Amazons on this side. 
And then you got all of the uh, soldiers down here waiting to do their thing. So cool though to see them in the period. It's like a period piece. It's like going back in time in a way. So it's really cool in that respect. But there they are about to reenact this scene. And you can see it's a lot of green screen here, but still behind it is the actual mountainside. So what they do is while they have some green screen for some of it, because remember you gotta have the archway that they run out through. If you look at the dots, it probably explains it, shows you the archway here. So they'll be coming, the Amazons will be coming out through this archway, and then they're fighting the war coming against the soldiers. Okay? So that's what you're seeing here. So there's actually a structure here, that's why the green screen is there. But it sculpts into the mountainside and the uh, the actual uh, whatever is there for the mountainside. So you have to understand when we talk green screen, very rarely does Warner Brothers use everything in green screen. Okay? The beach itself, you know, was not green screen, but there were special effects, S effects and V effects that we use on the beach for explosions and stuff. There was explosions and stuff on the on the on the beach scene, but they embellished things. So what you have to understand is SFX and VFX embellish things. There are always stuff there. Um, if they can keep it as a, Warner Brothers has always had this, uh, always had this perception that we should keep things as organic as possible when we're storytelling. So a lot of times they go for actual venues, actual things, but then they fill in the missing parts with VFX. And this is how it is in film in general. In general, sometimes even a movie that you don't think has VFX in that do have VFX in them, okay? Whether it's just a gunshot with a gun bullet, you know, a guy shoots and you see the, the like, it looks like sparks fly from the gun, but that's not, that's not there in the actual shoot, you know what I mean? So, VFX are used almost in every movie, but I think a lot of people don't understand what goes on in the movie industry, so when you hear somebody say, oh, there's a lot of green screen here and a lot of green screen, I'm like, dude, that wasn't the green screen shot. Like, you should know this. You're, you're supposed to be somebody who you claim you know what's happening in the industry. Then you should know that's not a green screen shot. Okay? And that's why I keep on saying with Aquaman knocking down the Parademon and everybody's like, oh, even if it's green screen. I'm like, first of all, homie, make sense of it. What parts of it are green screen? You need to tell me that. Because a lot of times people don't understand how film is shot. You see what I'm saying? So people take it for granted, oh, it's green screen. You don't know if it's green screen. Oh, so, so the color tone is different. That makes it a green screen? That's a camera effect. So if I go and I put everything red, I, oh, I put everything sepia, that means it's green screen? Come on. So that, that's why I have a problem with some people. They don't understand camera angles. They don't understand what is camera effects. That's part of special effects too, but it's camera effects. It doesn't have to be computer generated. It doesn't have to be a computer generated uh, CGI imagery you're looking at. Okay? Sometimes it's not even full CGI. It's CGI blended with reality. So I think a lot of people don't understand these things. And nobody's explaining it in the industry. They just let these dummies talk. You know, because they've seen a Marvel film and now they're saying, oh, look, another Marvel film. It's going to repeat itself. It's going to try and duplicate. And they sign off, right? But they don't really pay attention to what's really going on. And a lot of times, I like, that's another reason why I like the DCEU, because they go for that organic feel. Even though the storytelling is not naturalistic, they go for an organic feel. They go for as real as possible. And it's really a shame that Fantastic Four bombed so badly, because Fantastic Four, again, was going for realism in for the first time in their Fantastic Four movie. But the problem that made Fantastic Four actually collapse and, and be destroyed was the ending of Fantastic Four. And it was good. I mean, it was it had a certain degree of you felt afraid and people were getting shot and people were getting killed. So Fantastic Four was pretty good. But then coming down to the end, and then, of course, people were thinking, this is like the other Fantastic Fours, so I can send my children to see this thing. It wasn't exactly that, okay? It was a true PG-13. So, like I said... I think a lot of people, I liked Fantastic Four, I liked the offbeat, the different way how they, they did the nerddom and how it wasn't, there was no real, you know, typical Hollywood kind of way of doing a movie. I liked it, but the problem with Fantastic Four was how it ended. It, it, it didn't, you're selling realism and that's cool, but then the ending 
didn't feel complete at all. And in just the way how the world was saved left some open ends and you were like, uh, they're going to close these open ends, you know? So that was the only thing. But I liked how they, I even liked what they said at the end, how they came up with the name. So uh, I thought it's, a, it's an underrated movie. But nonetheless, the point is that you, will, you cannot fault the DCEU for CGI or special effects and stuff if you don't know what you're talking about. And a lot of these people don't know what they're talking about. And it annoys me to no end. Anyway, this is my video again on Wonder Woman. I gotta go, guys. You have a great one.